Hello students, welcome to the lecture on personal management. And after the lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Define the nature of personnel management. Explain differences between personal management and human resources management. Describe the objectives of personnel management. Explain functions of personal management. Explain personal management in public sector. Discuss the challenges of HRM. Let's start with a brief introduction of personal management. Personal management is the special branch of management which is responsible for matters related to the employment and regulation of employees and workers. According to FLIPO, personnel management is the planning, organizing, compensation, integration and maintenance of people for the purpose of contributing to organizational, individual and societal goals. According to Breck, personnel management is that part which is primarily concerned with human resource of organization. The days of simply maintaining personnel files and advising on hiring, firing and compensation are long gone for HR professionals. Today, they fulfill a variety of roles that require knowledge and competencies in areas that were foreign to them in the past. It was in the 1980s that human resource management was developed in the USA. Billed as a new approach to managing people, the key aspect of HRM was that people are a firm's most important asset that must be valued, empowered and committed. This was unlike its predecessor, personnel management, which focused on administering people as a resource like any other in the organization that needed to be carefully and cost-effectively controlled, hence the higher and fire perception of personnel management. Today's HR profession has moved on considerably. The Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development identifies 10 professional areas. Service delivery and information, organizational design, organizational development, resourcing and talent planning, learning and talent development, performance and reward, employee engagement, employee relations, leading HR, and insights, strategy, and solutions. Clearly, HR is no longer hiring and firing, but is core to the effectiveness of an organization. And importantly, HRM is not just for HR managers, it is for all managers and leaders to understand and apply. Let's now discuss the nature of personnel management. Personnel management includes the function of employment, development and compensation. These functions are performed primarily by the personnel management in consultation with other departments. Personnel management is an extension to general management. It is concerned with promoting and stimulating competent workforce to make their fullest contribution to the concern. Personal management exists to advise and assist the line managers in personal matters. Therefore, personnel department is a staff department of an organization. Personnel management lays emphasis on action rather than making lengthy schedules, plans and work methods. It is based on human orientation. It tries to help the workers to develop the potential fully to the concern. Personal management deals with human resources of a concern. In context to human resources, it manages both individual as well as blue-collar workers. It also motivates the employees through its effective incentive plans so that the employees provide fullest cooperation. You have to know who you want. And at first, you just want smart, hardworking, motivated, passionate people. You take them where you can find them. As you grow, you then start saying, oh, we have a hole. We need help here. Like, we need someone to, to add ex this thing to our org. Um, and that's often sort of a specific function within engineering or within design or within marketing. We went through the exercise of defining roles very explicitly, defining an org chart, reporting structure, reviews, and all that sort of stuff, which is totally unnecessary day one because odds are you have much bigger fish to fry, but it's 
integral to sort of being able to continue to scale. And it's part of the process of, you know, building the product that builds the product, you know, having org chart and having sort of structure internally, um, not to keep people boxed in, but to give them sort of the freedom and understanding of knowing what they're responsible for and, and having accountability for that. And something I'm sure a lot of companies face is that someone who was right for a role at one point in time no longer is the right person at a subsequent point in time. So I think the way that we've started thinking about it, and I think a helpful way to think about it, is that we're a professional sports team. You know, we're not a family. It's uh, inclusion is not um, a given. You know, our love is not unconditional. We're always respectful, obviously, but at the end of the day, we're here to to accomplish something, to win the Super Bowl. And to do that means having the right people on the field at the right time. And um, that's how you have to evaluate it. Once you know uh, it needs to be taken care of, you dread it because it is truly miserable. But at the end of the day, you know, the next day and the week after, you realize uh, how right that was, or hopefully, um, and how sort of the organization can benefit from that. Let's now have a look on role of personal manager. First, we will understand the administrative roles. The administrative roles of human resources management includes the policy formulation and implementation, housekeeping, records man maintenance, welfare, administrative, legal compliance, etc. Policy maker. The human resource manager helps management in the formation of policies governing talent, acquisition and retention, wage and salary administrative welfare activities, personnel records, working conditions, etc. The administrative expert. The administrative role of an HR manager is heavily oriented to processing and record keeping. Maintaining employees' file and HR-related databases, processing employee benefit claims, answering queries regarding leave, transport and medical facilities, submitting required reports to regulatory agencies are examples of the administrative nature of HR management. Advisor Personal advice includes preparation of reports, communication of guidelines for their interpretation and implementation of policies, providing information regarding labor laws, etc. Housekeeper the administrative roles of a personnel manager in man managing the show include recruiting pre-employment testing, reference checking, employee surveys, timekeeping, wage and salary administration, benefits and pension administration, wellness programs, maintenance of records, etc. Counselor. The personnel manager discusses various problems of the employees relating to work, career, their supervisors, colleagues, health, family, financial, social, etc. and advises them on minimizing and overcoming problems, if any. Legal consultant. Personal manager plays a role of grievance handling, settling of disputes, handling disciplinary cases, doing collective bargaining, enabling the process of joint consultation, interpretation and implementation of various labor laws, contacting lawyers regarding court cases, filing suits in labor courts, industrial tribunals, civil courts and the like. Now let's take a look on the operational roles of personal manager recruiter. HR managers have to use their experience to good effect while laying down lucrative career paths to new recruits without increasing the financial burden to the company. Trainer, developer, motivator. Apart from talent acquisition, talent retention is also important. To this end, HR managers have to find skill deficiencies from time to time, offer meaningful training opportunities and bring out the latent potential of people through intrinsic and extrinsic reports which are valued by employers. Coordinator linking pin. The HR manager is often deputed to act as a linking pin between various divisions and departments of an organization. Mediator. The personal manager acts as a mediator in case of friction between two employees, the groups of employees, superiors and subordinates, and employees and management with the sole objective of maintaining industrial harmony. The differences between personal management PM and human resource management HRM. There are many differences between personal management PM and human resource management HRM. Those are personal mean employed persons of an organization. Management of these people is PM. HRM is the management of employees' knowledge, aptitude, abilities, talents, creative abilities and skills competencies. PM is traditional, routine, maintenance oriented, administrative function, whereas HRM is continuous, ongoing development function aimed at improving the human processes. 
PM is an independent function with independent sub-functions, whereas HRM follows the system thinking approach. It is not considered in isolation from the larger organization and must take into account the linkages and interfaces. PM is treated like a less important auxiliary function, whereas HRM is considered a strategic management function. PM is reactive, responding to demands as and when they arise. HRM is proactive, which anticipating, planning and advancing continuously. Important motivators in PM are compensation, rewards, job simplification and so on. HRM considers work groups, challenges and creativity on the job as motivators. In PM, improved satisfaction is considered to be the cause for improved performance, but in HRM it is the other way around. Performance is the cause and satisfaction is the result. In PM, employee is treated as an economic unit as his services are exchanged for wages or salaries. Employee in HRM is treated not only as economic unit, but also a social and psychological entity. Let's know the objectives of personal management. Creating a congenial and healthy environment for employees or workers to function effectively. Creating a better interpersonal relations. Developing a sense of responsibility and responsiveness among workers and employees. Boosting the morale and the sense of initiative among employees. Adopting the best techniques or the conceivable methods to bring the best possible development of workers on work. To bring about organizational and human resource developments through training, development programs or even managerial succession planning. Selection and placement of right number of people and ensuring proper allocation of duties and responsibilities upon them. Let's now have a look on the functions of personal management. First, we will understand the management functions. Planning. Planning is a fundamental function of personal management. It involves deciding in advance what is to be done, where, how and by whom it is to be done. While planning an office manager projects a course of action for the future aimed at achieving desired results for the organization as a whole and each department within it. Organization. It is used in the sense of an enterprise or a business unit. In operational sense, organization may be considered as consisting of division of work among people and coordination of the activities towards some objectives. Directing. Supervising the work of subordinates to ensure that their performance conforms to plan. Maintaining discipline and rewarding effective performance. Motivating the subordinates to direct their behavior in a desired pattern. Controlling. Controlling as a function of management means the measurement and the correction of performance of the activities of subordinates in order to make sure that enterprise objectives and plans devised to attain them are accomplished. Control thus consists in knowing the extent to which actions are in conformity with plans adopted and instructions issued so that the errors and the deviations are reported and appropriate corrective actions can be taken. Functions of management, in which I will list the functions, planning is the first one we are going to discuss. Planning is the primary step of management. Planning is the process of making decisions about the future. It is the process of determining enterprising objective and selective future course of action necessary for their accomplishment. It is the process of deciding in advance that what is to be done, when and where it is to be done, how it is to be done and by whom. Applications of planning. Planning provides direction to enterprise activities so that the organizational objective can be fulfilled. This is known as hollow effect. It bridges the gap between where we are and where we want to go. A proper planning helps the management to avoid uncertainty and wastage of resource. The second function which I am going to discuss is organizing. Organizing is concerned with the management of organizational resources such as people, material, technology etc. The organization has to identify the activities and classify those activities into different groups, by assigning them different duties and responsibilities for better performance. The management has to organize both human and non-human resources or we can say it is a conscious coordination of people towards a desired goal. Third function is staffing. It is the function of employing suitable person for the enterprise. It may be defined as an activity where people are recruited, selected, trained, developed, 
motivated and compensated for manning various positions. It includes movement of not only individuals into an organization but also their movement through promotion, job rotation, transfer and out, termination, retirement from the organization. Staffing involves selection of the right man for the right job by utilizing the following elements. Manpower planning, recruitment, selection, training, compensation, performance appraise, promotion of suitable candidate, retirement. Fourth function is directing. It is the function of leading the employees to perform efficiently and effectively and also to contribute to their optimum for accomplishment of the organizational objective. The function of guiding and supervising the activities of the subordinates is known as directing. Directing tells people that what to do and see that they do it to the best of their ability because acquiring human assets and placing them in suitable positions is not sufficient. Jobs assigned to them must be explained and clarified. Proper guidelines must be given with supervision and motivation to contribute for achieving the objective with enthusiasm and zeal. The following components must be remembered while executing directing function. Leading, motivating, communicating, supervising, coordinating is the fifth function. Coordination is a function of establishing relationship among various parts of the organization so that they are all together pulled towards organizational objective. It is the process of integrating together all the organizational decisions, operations, activities and efforts towards accomplishment of organizational goal. That's why coordination is a crucial function of management which is regarded as integral part of all other function. The last one in the list is controlling. The objective of controlling is to ensure that actions are contributed for goal accomplishment. It helps in keeping the organizational activities on the right path or align them according to the plans. Controlling is a function of ensuring that the divisional, departmental, sectional and individual performances are measured and compared with that of the plan. If the measured performance is not satisfactory, the manager must find reasons and take corrective actions for rectification of that problem immediately. If the controlling function is to be effective, then it includes 1. Setting standard of performance 2. Measuring actual performance 3. Comparing actual performance against standards 4. Taking corrective active actions to ensure goal accomplishments. Successful management involves active participation by managers in the above managerial functions. These functions are interrelated and most managers use a combination of all simultaneously to solve the problem face. Let us understand the operative functions of personnel management. Procurement. It is concerned with the obtaining of the proper kind and number of personnel necessary to accomplish necessary organization goals. The function is related to subjects like the determination of manpower requirements and the recruitment, selection and placement. Development. Development implies the increase of skill through training that is necessary for proper job performance. Development function will be influenced by numerous factors like induction of new machines, promotions and transfers, compensation. Compensating remains one of the most basic functions of personnel management. A proper wage system takes into consideration a number of factors and subjects like job evaluation, wage policies, wage systems and wage incentive schemes. Integration. Integration must follow the above three functions of procurement, development and compensation. The function of integration relates to problems of communication, informal organization and trade unions. Maintenance. Maintenance refers to sustaining and improving the conditions that have been established. In order to accomplish this objective, it would be desirable that research must continue in every direction so that the function of maintenance is performed properly. Let's now take a look on personal management in public sector. Personal staff exist to serve line management. This is the primary function. An organization's employees are collectively termed personnel. It is the job of personnel management to see that these disparate goals are met in the best possible manner using the resources. Training is also an important part of personnel management. Training, like employee performance, is also subject to evaluation and feedback. No one can tell how successful a training program is without using some evaluative measures to study its result. 
Selection becomes a part of management development when managers are scrutinized in order to determine their effectiveness on the job and their suitability for further management development training. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Personnel management is the specialist branch of management which is responsible for matters related to the employment and regulation of employees and workers. Personnel manager is the head of personnel department. He performs both managerial and operative functions of management. A primary goal of the human resources is to enable employees to work to maximum level of efficiency. Planning is a fundamental function of personnel management. It involves deciding in advance what is to be done, where, how and by whom it is to be done. Compensating remains one of the basic functions of personnel management. A proper wage system takes into consideration a number of factors and subjects like job evaluation, wage policies, wage systems and wage incentive schemes. Personnel staff exist to serve line management. This is the primary function. In organizations, employees are collectively termed personnel.